مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل وكل في فلك يسبحون ويخلق ما لا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه Brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to a new episode of our program uh, Universal Quran We talked before uh, about the beginning of Surah Al-Fajr and we talked about the previous nations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned them in the Surah and uh, we stopped by this and here uh, the, the surah is moving to uh, a new phase or is, is giving us some uh, important things about one of the issues that some people have or this is the man in general Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here he says فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَكْرَمًا وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَبْتَلَهُ فَقَدْرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَهَانًا So this is the nature of the person when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the beginning when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, honoring him is training him by by a kind of honor he would say oh my lord has honored me and, uh, and, and on the other side when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he restricts his uh, sustenance or the person's sustenance then the, the, the same person would say oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has humiliated me but we must always be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will notice that the first verse uh, called uh, honoring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or giving you more sustenance as a kind of test, as a kind of a trail. And the second verse said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he restricts somebody's re- sustenance, is a kind of trail. Yes, this is, that's correct. Because giving you, for example, more sustenance or more provision or loads of money, loads of uh, good things, this is a kind of test by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he said in Surah Tagawan, إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةً Indeed, your uh, money and your sons and daughters are a kind of test. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Imran, زُيِّنَ الْنَّاسِ حِبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ وَالْبَنِينَ وَالْقَنَاطِيرَ الْمُقَنْطَرَةِ مِنَ الذَّهَبِ وَالْفِضَّةِ وَالْخَيْرِ الْمُسَوَّمَةِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ وَالْحَرْثِ ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ الْمَآبِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made all these things beautiful in the eyes of people in order to test them, in order uh, to make them as trial. Because as we said, this life is very, very limited. Whatever pleasures you have here will come to an end. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ وَإِذَا مَا بْتَلَهُ رَبُّهُ فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَكْرَمًا This is something which is naturally in everyone. When you are given many pleasures and many blessings, you would say, Oh, Allah has been generous to me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored me. But on the other side, if, for example, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made your sustenance limited or restricted, then uh, people would say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has humiliated me. But this is not the right case of the real believer. As the Prophet he said, عَجَبَ الْأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنُ وَإِنَّ مُرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَخَيْرِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ سَرَّاءَ شَكَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ دَرَّاءَ صَبَرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرَ اللَّهِ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ الْأَحْدٍ إِلَّا الْمُؤْمِنِ The Prophet uh, says in the seventh hadith, I am wondering at the affair of the believer, or I feel wonder at the affair of the believer. If he was inflicted by something good, he uh, will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he was inflicted by something which is not uh, good or difficult, he would be patient and he will thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this will not be uh, eligible or this will not for everyone, but it's only for the believer. And uh, the sound also uh, hadith which is reported by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, in which the Prophet says, Ta'araf ila Allah fi rakha, ya'arifka fi shidda. Get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of difficulty and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know you in times of uh, the opposite. The Prophet says, Ta'araf ila Allah fi rakha, ya'arifka fi shidda. Know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of prosperity and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will know you uh, in times of difficulty. So if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with you, uh, when you have hardship, uh, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and be with him uh, in the times when you are in a very good way and uh, everything in, in a prosperous uh, situation. Uh, so 
فيقول ربي اكرم واما اذا ما ابتلاه فقدر عليه رزقه فيقول ربي اهانا when he is inflicted by something that he doesn't like he would say uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has humiliated me but this is again this is not the right thing uh, one of the sahaba I don't know whether I mentioned this story in one of the episodes or not anyway just to say it again for more uh, uh, admonishing and for more remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the companions is called Abu Talha and Abu Talha used to uh, pray behind the Prophet he didn't miss any single raka'ah and one day uh, the Prophet asked him and uh, he knows very well his situation but Sayyidina Abu Talha had only one dress and the Prophet he asked him Abu Talha uh, how is everything? He said, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy and I'm uh, leading a very good life. So the Prophet ﷺ, he gave him one of his uh, uh, dresses. And the man, this is, this is the companion and his wife, subhanAllah, look at her and look at uh, some Muslim women nowadays. When he entered uh, his home and he was very happy because he's wearing the Prophet ﷺ dress, uh, he said to his wife that the Prophet ﷺ gave me uh, this dress. And look at the reaction of his wife. Didn't uh, she didn't say to him, "You are clever, you are generous, you are genius, you are the best uh, husband," uh, because you managed to get something from the Prophet. But she didn't say any of these things. But she said to him, "Oh, what happened to you? Have you gone to the Prophet? You complained to him. You said we are." in a difficult time now, we are facing a financial crisis, we are uh, in, in this very miserable situation. He said to her, no, I didn't say any of these things. But the Prophet asked me about my situation and I thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I said, alhamdulillah, so he gave me his dress. And I only got the dress, look at the simple life they used to uh, lead. I only got or I only accepted the dress from the Prophet because for only one purpose, when I die and people would put me in the grave and the angels uh, come to ask me, they will ask me the first question, who is your Lord? I will say, my Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second question, who is your messenger? And I will say to them, I am wearing his dress now. So this is something which is very simple and they were very happy. They never complained about uh, the difficult situation, about money, about shortage of money, about, for example, lacking some uh, luxurious things and uh, uh, thinking about buying something which is up to date or something which is fashionable, something which is modern. No, you need to live your life according to your uh, uh, capabilities or abilities. Your financial, for example, or your wage or your salary, for example, let's say it's $1,000 uh, per month. So you need to uh, uh, make this salary enough for your needs. And you shouldn't look for more things as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept and doesn't like this behavior. He said in Surah Taha, وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّعْنَا بِهِ أَزْوَاجًا مِنْ مُزَارَةَ الْحَيَةِ الدُّنْيَا لِنَفْتِنَهُمْ فِيهِ وَرِزْقُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى The provision of your Lord of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than all these things. And if you see some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, for example, preferred them and, and gave them more money or more, for example, uh, 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 luxury things, again, this is only a kind of test. And then they will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will ask them about what they have done with all these blessings that he gave to them. Uh, you shouldn't uh, always complain because the Prophet said, When a person is, is having a kind of difficulty and he is complaining to people, it's exactly as if you are complaining Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his uh, uh, creation to his worshippers to his slaves so always direct your complaint or direct your uh, problem first to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say oh Allah uh, as the best example to be mentioned here is the story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam uh, when he went to the people of Madian and subhanallah he didn't say uh, loads of complaints but he said Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer oh Allah uh, the, the, the provision I have is just little, is just limited. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, provided him with loads of things. He married and, and, and he became prosperous and he got many uh, blessings and many things by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he uh, uh, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very polite and in a very humble way. And always when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, you shouldn't ask for something which is 
may uh, help you to commit a sin, for example. لا تدعو الله The Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, the dua of one of you might be accepted uh, uh, unless if he asks for something haram. Don't say, oh Allah, give me the money, for example, to uh, go to the pub. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept your call and will not accept your dua. And your dua will not be responded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask him for something good and ask him for something lawful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in the next verse, Kalla bala tukrimun al yatim. He says, nay, nay, you don't honor, you don't give uh, your full support to al yatim, uh, to the orphan. Which is also another important issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Duha, He said to us, and, 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 the, and the, the verses, uh, uh, indeed they are addressing the Prophet ﷺ, talking to the Prophet directly, but the way of addressing is to the whole Muslim ummah, to the whole Muslim nation. Allah says, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ As for the yatim, as for the orphan, don't uh, make him, for example, uh, uh, suffer. And in Surah Al-Ma'un, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوِرِ الْمُصَلِينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ يَرَأُونَ فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يَدُعْ الْيَتِيمُ وَلَا يَحُدُّ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ Allah disapproves the, the, the behavior of people who are oppressing the yatim, who are oppressing the, the, the orphan, who are causing him a kind, for example, of disturbance. Or they do not take care of him. The Prophet ﷺ, he promised the one who uh, uh, supports an orphan or he who takes, for example, an orphan and gives him money and something like that, uh, he will be very close to the Prophet in paradise. He said, and in the sound hadith, أنا وكافر لتيمي كهاتين في الجنة and he pointed out to his two fingers. It, it means that the, the place between you and the Prophet ﷺ are so close as the distance between these two fingers. يهدي به الله من اتبع Amazing stories. In this program, we get to know about people of the past whose stories were mentioned in the Islamic tradition and related by the Prophet, peace be upon him. That verily, us, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we tell you about the best of the stories. We tell you about the best of the stories. When we narrate a story, when we read a story, when we try to benefit from a story, what we are trying to do in reality is to go back through the steps, through the different parts and sections of this story until the story is actually completed and that we can take the actual benefit directly from the story. Sheikh Lutfi will narrate these stories in his program Amazing Stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one of the lands to come closer, the destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one whole city to come closer, to move closer to this dead person. to be uh, very close to the Prophet ﷺ in paradise, so have an orphan and support him and uh, to give him, for example, with the food you have or try to uh, take as much as you can of the orphans and there are loads of organizations in the Muslim world now that support the orphan and, and try to educate them and try to find them, for example, housing and do all these things. Uh, 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 one of the people went to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, I feel that there is a kind of hardness in my heart or my heart is harsh, what should I do? He said to him, okay, wipe the head or the hair of the orphan, which means take care of the orphan and try to support him as much as you can. If you want to get admittance or to get permission to paradise, you need, of course, to be good to the orphan. And then he says, uh, You don't encourage each other to feed the needy, which is uh, uh, something that we have to avoid. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, The meaning of the hadith, uh, 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 try to spread peace or say assalamu alaykum and feed the needy and pray while people are asleep, then you will uh, peacefully enter paradise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the reward for that. Uh, the verse again, uh, 
that warns us against devouring or usurping people's rights, especially in the issue of inheritance. He says, what It means that you devour inheritance. A lot of Muslim communities, they do not, especially with females or with women, they do not give women their share in inheritance. And they say, uh, we are not among the people who give uh, uh, inheritance to women because she's going to marry and another person will take her share. This is not your problem. Just give her her full share, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah uh, Al-Nisa, for example, and the verses which are distributing the shares for each one, for the mother, for the grandmother, for the sister, and so on. So you need to apply these Islamic rules and these shares to every one of your uh, family in order to be uh, uh, accepted and pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتَأْكُلُونَ التُّرَاثَ أَكْلًا لَمَّا وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا A lot of people are crazy about loving money. And they love money more than anything else. They can, they are ready to sacrifice their life for the sake of money. And the Prophet ﷺ warned us against that and he said in the hadith, تَعِسَى عَبْدُ الدِّنَارِ وَالدِّرْهَمْ The one who is a slave or who worships money, uh, who worships dinar, who worships gold, for example. He, it's not a matter of worship, but he likes such things as if he is worshipping them because uh, all of us, we only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he prefers loving, for example, money or loving such things to uh, uh, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the love of the Prophet The Prophet said that the one who loves these things to this extent is going to be unhappy, is going to lead an unhappy life, is going to have some troubles because Money is only uh, a means by which you can live. It's only one of the ways by which you can support yourself. You take the money, for example, you go for shopping, you get a new dress, you get a car, you get, it's, it's just some, it's called notes. So it's just a piece of paper, you give it to a trader or a seller, for example, you get an item or you get some goods, that's it. So money is not something that means be revered uh, to an extent which looks like, for example, worship. And, and, and this, is, this, is, uh, this behavior or this uh, practice must not uh, be the behavior of a Muslim. A Muslim, he thinks or he is quite sure that this life is the whole of which, with all its pleasures, with all, with all its blessings, is only a matter of test by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى As all of us, we memorize Surah Al-A'la, وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى this is in Surah Al-Duha, and then uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al-Ala, "Bal tuthurun al-hayat al-dunya, wal akhiratu khairun wa abqa." Indeed, you prefer or you love this life, but the hereafter is better than because, as we stated before, uh, uh, in the hereafter, in the akhirah, life is unlimited, and the pleasure there will never be disturbed by anything. But uh, you might have something which is luxurious, or you might live uh, uh, in, a, in, in a luxurious place, but this. Uh, pleasure or this blessing, for example, might be disturbed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتُحِبُّونَ الْمَالَ حُبًّا جَمَّا So loving money, loving wealth, be a slave for money to this extent, is something is disapproved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because uh, the, the money, if it was spent for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is something recommended as uh, uh, in the case of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, when he brought all what he had, before the Prophet, they used to make a kind of race between Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Sayyidina Abu Bakr brought all his money, and Sayyidina Umar brought half of his money. And both of them, they dedicated the money completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for, to prepare the armies and, and do all these things. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after that, after uh, talking about those who are grateful uh, because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor them and those who are ungrateful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restricted uh, his sustenance to them. In both cases, the Muslim must be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, must be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any position, whether you have, you are wealthy or you are poor, you are, for example, in a sound health or you are ill. In all these cases, uh, because the whole of this life is just a very short test, whatever we are going to live is limited, whether you will live 50, 60, 100, 
uh, it's not very long life, but the Akhira, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ankabut, the best life is in the hereafter if they have got an idea or if they have knowledge about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, uh, says also, uh, when the earth is pounded to powder here, people will remind, uh, will remember uh, if they were on the right path, that's fine. If they were on the wrong path, uh, they will uh, remember that and they will regret. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zumr, Ya Hasrata an taqula nafsun, Ya Hasrata ala ma farrattu fi jambi Allahi wa in kuntu la min al-sakhirin. People will regret uh, what they had done in their previous life. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waja arabbuka wal malaku saffan saffa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment uh, uh, will of course uh, come to judge among people and his throne will be uh, uh, placed in a way that is suitable for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We shouldn't think uh, about how the throne will be placed. This is not our concern. But we have only to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will come and the throne will be placed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge people's affairs. And وَجِئَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِجَهَنَّمْ Jahannam or hellfire will be brought by uh, angels as well because it is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the hadith, uh, uh, an nar or hell has been made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish those who are disobedient and paradise has been made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward those who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the verse ends. Surah, the, the, the surah ends with Allah saying, Ya ayyatu nafsu mutma'inna turji'i la rabbika radiyata mardiyya fadkhuli fi ibadi wa tkhuli jannati. The person or the people will remember what they had done in this day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is recommending, is, is praising those people who are good. And when a good person dies, for example, when his soul uh, goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or uh, the angels would say, Ya ayyatu nafsu, O pure soul, go uh, up to your Lord and uh, you are uh, pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will please you. So the surah ends with these verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here to, uh, says to the righteous soul will be said, O oh, you soul in complete uh, rest and satisfaction, come back to your Lord well pleased and well pleasing unto him, enter uh, then among my devotees and enter my paradise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, will be pleased with the righteous people as we stated before and as the Quran confirms this truth. Uh, so this is a very good chance we can seize the chance before uh, we, we lose it, which is the month of Ramadan. This is the month of Ibadat and the month of worships in order to be pleased by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in order to make our deeds accepted we need to stick to this book as the Prophet said The two things, if you stick to them entirely, if you uh, uh, have no other guidance but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala book and the Prophet uh, uh, traditions and sunnah, then you are on the right path and then you will have full guidance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the verse we stated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with those who fear him and those who are righteous and over all ways they observe their duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we cannot forget the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has shrouded and has bestowed upon us in this month. And he is giving us loads of chances in order to repent, in order to renew the contract or the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So indeed, we are in need to do that and we are in need to hurry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he says in Surah Al-Dhariyat, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ إِنِّي لَكُمْ مِنْهُ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ We have to run, we have to hasten our repentance and go direct to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will be very close to you and He will uh, uh, come to you quicker than you do, as He said in the sound, Holy Hadith, من تقرب إلي شبر تقربت إلي ذراع من تقرب إلي ذراع تقربت إلي باع and so on. If you come to Allah subhanahu wa taala in a small distance, He will come to you in a longer distance, and so on until Allah subhanahu wa taala loves you. And if He loves you, then you have gained all success, and you have been among the best people, 
uh, with whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our deeds and to bless all of us and to bless this month and to accept our fasting and to accept our qiyam and make us among those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted their deeds and has forgiven their past sins and gave them a kind of uh, forgiveness for their future sins inshallah until we meet again assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh وترى الجبال تحسبها جامدة وهي تمر مر السحاب صنع الله الذي أتقن كل شيء إنه خبير بما تفعلون مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل وكل في فلك يسبح